the seven gates of hell in York. Um, this should be interesting. Um, alright, let's see. As legend goes, an insane asylum once resided in a wooden area of Hellum Township that burned down one faded night. Though many patients perished in the flames, many also escaped into the surrounding area, releasing its occupants into the surrounding area. Seven gates were built to trap the wandering inmates. The myth states that today only one gate is visible by day, though all seven are visible by night, and that any person who passes through all seven gates goes directly to hell. In reality, an insane asylum never vis existed in the area, and only one gate was built by a local doctor. It is very creepy. Okay. So we got the green man. Or Charlie No Face. This is one legend that turned out to be true. Residents of South Park area of the South Park area near Pittsburgh during the 1950s often often spotted a strange figure walking along Route 351 at night. The figure was a man without a face who was alleged who allegedly admitted a greenish glow. Locals were frightened by his shocking appearance and his nocturnal habits. The man, Ray Robinson, had been severely electrocuted as a child and lost most of his facial features. He only came out at night due to his disfigurement, though in reality he did not admit a glow of any sort. He was actually a really nice guy who would chat with, chat with anyone who approached him, though this not, did not prevent some passersby from treating him cruelly or the community from fostering ghost stories about his misfortune. That is really sad. Moving along, we have Blue Mist Road in Pittsburgh. Wow. Blue Mist Road is actually named Irwin Road. To be honest, I prefer Blue Mist. Mike. And is located in the North Hills area of Pittsburgh. A variety of urban legends populate the spooky stretch of road that is said to be shrouded in a blue mist by night. Two lovers' headstones in an adjacent cemetery are said to touch under the full moon. An old building foundation is said to be the home of a witch, and another house is said to be a home populated by little people who will, who will chase visitors. A half dog, half deer, half human is also said to live in the woods and will chase or harm any who creeps too far into its territory. People have traveled to the Blue Mist Road in hopes of finding these ghostly entities have mostly only found disgruntled residents. Nope, not even gonna risk it, not going there, mm-mm. Constitution Drive. In Allentown. Yet another haunted road, Constitution Drive in Allentown, is a gravel road in the quiet part that has a steep drop-off on one side and train tracks on the other. It is said that a man was struck by a train one night while walking his dogs, severing his legs and leaving him to perish over the course of a few days on the deserted stretch of road. Since passers-by have reported seeing paw prints and a single footprint in the snow left by the t ghost of the man and his dogs, legend also claims that the surrounding woods sometimes emit, emit a soft whistling sound and that the area is populated by tiny, pale-skinned people with red eyes. In reality, a man who lives on the road owns a small, pot-bellied pig farm, which probably explains the whole albino goblin thing. Yeah, maybe. The bus to nowhere in Philadelphia. Bus to nowhere. 
nowhere might sound like a song you would have listened to during puberty, but really it is mass transportation for Philadelphia's lost and hopeless. It is said that the bus only appears to those left truly distraught and alone by the most tragic events, the most tragic circumstances imaginable. If your wife took your retirement savings, then ran off to California with Brad Pitt, or your cat ate your children while you were asleep, or something of the like. God darn. The bus to nowhere would come for you. Passengers on the mystical bus sit two days by misery to interact or even look at any of the other passengers. It is only once you temporarily come out of the days that you will remember to pull the cord and get off. Once you exit, you will have no memory of your time on the bus, though legend states that some have been riding the bus for years and that some will never leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remind me to never get on a bus in in Philadelphia. Because with my luck, it's going to end up being this bus. The Devil's Road in Chad's Ford Township. The creepy area just... <coughs> 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 Sorry. <sighs> the creepy area just north of the Delaware border is so infused with ghostly tales that M. Night Shyamalan filmed his 2004 horror movie The Village in a nearby field. Rumors state that a white house hidden in the woods on Devil's Road, officially named Cossart Road, was home to a wealthy, incestuous family called the DuPonts, who resorted to inbreeding in order to keep their fortune within the family. The cult house was used as a place to perform incestuous marriages and as a place to hide deformed offspring. The trees in the area are dramatically bent away from the house, as if they are trying to escape. Piles of animal corpses have been discovered in the area by visitors. Much of the strange activity around Devil's Road can be chalked up to teenage pranksters, such as a fishing line that was strung across the road at Neck Height. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wildwood Cemetery in Williamsport. Wildwood Cemetery has two sides, a good side and a bad side. On a clear night, legend says that you can see fairies on the good side, while the bad side is populated by ghoulish creatures including a shrieking banshee and, and many individual tombs from which you can hear voices and banging sounds. There is a statue who cries and changes position by night and can be seen from the roadside. It is said that a retired fireman who is terrified of being buried alive designed a large mausoleum that here for himself and his family that could be open from the inside, no, but not the outside. At night, they are said to come out and play. Yeah, just a ghost family just playing around in the graveyard. Yeah, the Goblin of Easton. Folklore states that a greedy monk who worked at a mission in Easton, Pennsylvania made a fortune from blackmailing wealthy people who confessed their sins to him. He grew increasingly forceful with this coercion until finally he was hanged for beating a frail elderly woman to death. <laughs> The mission was not rid of the evil monk so easily. However, his body sprung to life and transformed it into a monstrous ghoul before the crowd. He disappeared into the nearby forest and returned only to feast upon the remaining monks of the old mission. Soon, the other monks fled and left the building to crumble. It's very creepy. The storm hag in Erie. So we got another hag. 
Alrighty. So, Pennsylvania is landlocked. We do have access to Lake Erie, a member of the Great Lakes, which are notorious for their violent, unpredictable storms. Presque Island, I hope I said that right, is an area of the lake notable for the large number of shipwrecks and disappearances that have occurred there. This is where the storm hag is said to live on the bottom of the lake, emerging only to feast upon unfortunate sailors. She has venomous nails, strong wraith-like arms, green pointed teeth, slimy green skin, and cat-like eyes that are the last thing her victims ever see. Like a siren, she sings an enticing song immediately before attack. The House on Ridge Avenue The House on Ridge Avenue, or the Conjular House, was for a long time considered to be the most haunted house in America. In fact, Thomas Edison once visited when he was experimenting with seance. What happened to inspire such ghost tales, you ask? The original owner of the house, Charles Conjular, was discovered having an affair with the maid by his wife who murdered the, the couple. A few days later, a neighbor, a neighbor discovered Mrs. Conjular mutter, muttering at the maid's decapitated head, which she had cradled in her lap while she sat in her rocking chair. As if that incident wasn't enough, the next owner of the house was a reclusive doctor who it discovered had a collection of women's heads in the basement that he was using for experimentation. After the crazy doctor, the house was converted into housing for immigrant workers who moved once they began mysteriously dying by one by one. Eventually, the house exploded, leaving only a crater in its path. Locals, locals existed that it had been transported back to hell where it came from. To this... To the disappointment of paranormal enthusiasts, enthusiasts, however, most of the grisly tales surrounding the house have been debunked by historical evidence, easily one of the most terrifying. And that is it for Pennsylvania Urban Legends. Um, let me know which state you want to see next. And subscribe.